everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight I have your WWE Royal Rumble 2021 review and results. So as you guys know how these videos work, we're going to be breaking down the entire WWE Royal Rumble 2021 pay-per-view, letting you guys know exactly what took place at the show, letting you guys know everything that I thought about it, my own thoughts, personal opinions about everything that took place at this show. Royal Rumble is my favorite show of the year. Hopefully it lives up to it. I had some fears coming in. I had some excitement, some anxious. I mean, it's the Royal Rumble, man. Surprise after surprise. Prize, Royal Rumble. What else could be greater? We got two of those to cover. Championship matches. How did those fall? We're going to find the hell out, guys. Going into this show, I was super excited for it because it is the Royal Rumble. Would it disappoint me? Would it be amazing? Would it be somewhere in between? We're going to find the hell out, guys. Let's dive into this show and break it all down for you and give you my own thoughts and give you my own thoughts and opinions on everything that took place. So with that being said, guys, let's dive into Royal Rumble 2021 and find out what the hell happened. So starting out with the kickoff show, guys, we had the Women's Tag Team Championship match out first. Charlotte and Asuka starting out defending their titles against Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. You guys know, again, how I feel about the Women's Tag Titles. You know how I feel about Shayna and Nia, especially as a team. But I pretty much knew how this one was going gonna go down. The match wasn't horrific or anything. I, I just didn't give a damn. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think the match was bad. If you guys enjoy these two teams or you enjoy the Women's Tag Titles, you may want to go check it out. It wasn't a bad match or anything. It just wasn't anything to move the needle. But but anyways, guys, we all knew it, right? Out comes Lacey Evans, out comes Charlotte's daddy -o, and cost Charlotte the match. She locked in the figure eight. Lacey distracted her. She got out of it. She fought back. Charlotte locks the figure eight back in. Brass knucks to the face after a Nia distraction. And one, two, three, Shayna and Nia after a terribly looking leg drop. If you want to go back and watch this match, just go back and watch the terrible, ugly leg drop the Nia Jax drop after the brass knucks shot to Charlotte. Got to keep her looking elite strong, you know? I knew she wasn't going to tap out to Shayna. So there it goes. Leg drop, brass knucks, one, two, three. Shayna and Nia are the new tag champs. I predicted this. I pretty much knew exactly how it was going to go. Just because it was predictable doesn't mean it was bad. I just did not care. But that was your women's tag team championship match. Shayna and Nia get back the worthless straps. So the main Royal Rumble show, guys, opened up with our WWE championship match. Drew McIntyre taking on Goldberg in the WWE title match here at the Royal Rumble. Very, very scared for this one, man. I mean, who the hell knows? You guys know the past of Goldberg. Goldberg knocking out The Fiend, knocking out Kevin Owens, always showing up at big time pay-per-views, trying to take away spots from the young ones, from the guys that they built up all freaking year long. So I'm not going to lie, I was definitely afraid for this one. Goldberg comes out in shorts, man. He looked like Brock Lesnar. He had his logo on the front and the back. I was like, oh, Brock Lesnar cosplay here at the Royal Rumble for Oldberg, but he shows up, and this was typically your, you know, your, your pretty much standard Goldberg match. Finisher, finisher, roll to the outside, a little bit of work. Finisher, 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 reversal, finisher, and it's over. Drew McIntyre does retain, thank Christ, after taking two or three spears. I think it was three spears total, one through the barricade, a jackhammer. I'm not gonna lie, man, when he hit that jackhammer, I thought it was over. I thought he, I thought it was over. I literally thought that we were gonna see the end of it, but Drew McIntyre retains the WWE Championship after a few claymores. I don't know what's next. After the match, Goldberg did hug. He hugged Drew McIntyre, so I, I don't know. Drew McIntyre and Goldberg did embrace after the match, so don't know exactly what that means, but Goldberg did not become champion. That's all I really care about, you know? Would he enter the Royal Rumble later? You will find out in this video. Hope to God not, but anything is possible. Drew McIntyre is, our, is still our WWE champion, though, which is the biggest thing. Thank God we survived this round, but I don't believe that it's over yet. We'll have to find out, but this match wasn't really much of anything. All you need to know is McIntyre is still your champion. Next up, we had the SmackDown Women's Championship match between Sasha Banks and Carmella, one that I really wasn't looking forward to. I didn't think it would be bad by any means, and I don't think this match was bad. I don't think it was bad by any stretch. If you are a Sasha or Carmella fan, you probably enjoyed it a lot. I like Sasha. I enjoy Carmella. I think she's improved a lot, but I just wasn't really looking forward to this. Wasn't the marquee match I wanted, and I feel like we have seen it a few times before, so I just really wasn't excited for it, but it turned out better than I thought. Just like we thought, Sasha Banks did retain. So Sasha Banks locks in the Banks statement and Carmella taps out. We all knew it would happen. You know, we're awaiting Sasha Banks' opponent for WrestleMania and her next lineup for that. And I think whoever wins the Rumble is probably going to be who challenges Sasha. We'll find that out later in the night. But for now, Sasha Banks is still your SmackDown Women's Champion. Not a bad matchup. Just nothing that really moved the needle for me. But the uh, Louis Vuitton inspired or the Louis Vuitton like attire that she had on was super badass. And the brown, gold, and white. I thought that was great. The all red sparkles by Carmella was also excellent. 
talent, but yeah, Sasha Banks is still your SmackDown Women's Champion, and it was what it was. Alright guys, now it is time for our first Royal Rumble match of the night. We had the Women's Royal Rumble in which Bayley drew the number one entrant. I did not expect Bayley to draw the number one entrant, but what I didn't expect even more was that none other than Naomi draws the second entrant. So our first surprise entrant was Naomi, and she comes out at the number two spot. She was looking good. I think she did some excellent stuff in this match, which we're going to get into. But this was our starting two. Very nice starting two. Great back and forth between the three. Between the three. I must be thinking of entrant number three, because entrant number three is who I picked to win the whole thing, and that was Bianca Belair. So number three was Bianca Belair, who I picked to win the Rumble. So these beginning three was perfect. I thought this beginning three was absolutely excellent. Bianca Belair and Naomi's back and forth was excellent. You know, the athleticism was on display for sure between these three. Number four was Billy Kay. She didn't even get in the ring. She got on commentary, you know, doing her typical Billy Kay bullcrap, doing her iconic stuff. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible, I will say. Number five was Shotzi Blackheart. She came out in her tank entrance. Number six was Shayna Baszler. So a lot of big names already. These four women right here, you got Kay, you got Shotzi Blackheart. I'm not talking about Kay being a big name, but these four right here are excellent big names to start off a Rumble match. Number seven, we had Tony Storm. Shayna eliminates Blackheart for our first elimination. Number eight was Jillian Hall. Didn't expect that whatsoever. She teams up with Billy Kay as Billy and Jilly, and they roll in and start beating people's ass together. That was that was pretty, uh, I didn't expect that one for sure. Number nine was Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot comes out. She's got her green hair going. She was looking good, man. She was flying all over the ring. I was impressed with what we got out of Ruby Riot. I liked her attire. Her, her shirt kind of reminded me of like 03 Taker. Number 10 was Victoria, and I totally popped for this. Did not expect that one bit. I actually uttered holy shit as this took place because I did not expect Victoria to be in this thing. So hopefully we'll get a Mattel Elite of Victoria moving forward. Number 11 was Peyton Royce. So Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, they get in each other's faces and then they do some moves together as, as you know, the former iconic members there, they team up together. Number 12 was Santana Garrett. Number 13 was Liv Morgan. Oh my God. So number 13 was Liv Morgan. She had that on this really sick striped attire. Billy Kay eliminates Jillian Hall and then Riot Squad, Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot team together to eliminate Billy K. Number 14 was Rhea Ripley, who I would not be mad at if she won the John Brown thing. She came out, she eliminated Tony Storm. Shayna eliminates Rhea Ripley. Shayna eliminated somebody. I have it in my notes. She eliminated Rhea, which is obviously not true. So, anyways, Rhea Ripley eliminates Santana Garrett in a very sick ass combo. I thought that was really excellent. Number 15 was Charlotte Flair. So, you know, Vince McMahon's favorite, Charlotte Flair at the halfway point here at 15. Bailey eliminates Ruby Riot, and in this elimination, she like killed her, bro. She like power bombed her off the apron, and it looked brutal. It looked terrible. It was very, very brutal to watch. Not gonna lie. Number sixteen is Dana Brooke. She comes out, looked pretty good. Athleticism all over the place. Cannonball into a crowd of women, and then Peyton Royce eliminates Liv Morgan. Number seventeen is Tori Wilson, and that totally popped me. I hope we get a. a we need Mattel elites of Tori Wilson, Stacy Keebler, Victoria, all these classic women back in the day. We need more elites of these women. Regardless, Rhea Ripley eliminates Dana Brooke, and oh my god, I thought she killed her. She does a powerbomb to Dana Brooke on the apron and eliminates her. Number 18 is Lacey Evans, so she comes out. Ric Flair introduces her as she makes her entrance, so we know where that's headed. Royce gets eliminated by Charlotte. Baszler eliminates Tori Wilson, and then Bianca Belair eliminates Bailey. That was one of the more shocking eliminations for me. I did not see Bailey getting eliminated that early. Even though it wasn't necessarily early, it was still pretty early in this matchup. Number 19, Mickey James which I don't know where my figure went, but number 20 was Nikki Cross. Number 21, Alicia Fox. Our truth comes out. Fox pins our truth to become 24-7 champion. Then Mandy Rose is number 22, and she eliminates Fox, and then our truth repins Alicia Fox and reclaims her championship, or his championship, I should say. So a lot happening right there. The legend Alicia Fox at that. Number 23 is Dakota Kai. She looked really good. Number 24 was Carmella, so she loses her championship match and then re-enters the the John Brown Royal Rumble in Roman Reigns fashion. You guys remember when that happened? So she pulls w double duty here tonight in that aspect. Rhea Ripley eliminates Dakota Kai really fast, and then she eliminates Mandy Rose, and on top of that, Carmella eliminates Nikki Cross. Number 25 is Tamina, and I vomit a little. Carmella ends up eliminating herself with her little bodyguard. She, like, he gets super kicked by Tamina and drops Carmella after he saved her, so Carmella is now gone. Tamina has a stare down with Rhea Ripley, and I laughed in her face a little. Naomi and Bianca Belair do their little save spot, but it looked very odd. It didn't really make sense to me. It just was very odd the way they did it. It wasn't smooth like years past. It was kind of confusing on what was going on and helping each other. I don't know. Regardless, 
I want to see them go head to head one day in, in a championship format. I think that would be really damn good. Number 26 is Lana. So Lana returns. I think the last time we saw her was before TLC. She tries to eliminate Rhea Ripley. Number 27 is Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss comes out. She's looking good. She wrestles for like a second. She really doesn't even do much. She comes out, does a few spots. Everyone teams up, beats the hell out of her. Then like we have some technical difficulties. There's some screens go out. She's standing in the middle of the ring on her knees and she kind of lifts her face up like she's about to turn into a demon or something Finn Balor style. You can tell some freaky issues going on. There's a loud crack and boom and then out of nowhere Rhea Ripley just gets rid of her ass. So we didn't even get to see what the hell was going to take place. They just got rid of her, man. Like Rhea Ripley dominated, eliminated her. Thought that was very interesting. I don't know where that's going to go. Number 28 is Ember Moon. So I was very excited for that. We get an eclipse from her. She looked pretty damn good in this thing. She looked good for a split second because out comes Nia Jax and you guys already know what's coming at number 29. She eliminates, Shayna eliminates Lacey Evans. Jax eliminates Ember just like that. Shayna eliminates Naomi. They both work together to get rid of Tamina. Jax eliminates Baszler so the, the, they literally won the tag titles earlier and then they turn on each other here in this matchup. Lana eliminates Nia Jax and then number 30, everyone's favorite is Natalia. So here we go. We're down to our last final few here. So when Natalia came out at number 30 guys, I was thinking to myself oh my god, because Jax and Shayna are both eliminated, yet they beat up on Natalya, they take her out. I thought oh my god, Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, somebody's about to take Natalya's place. So they beat her down, they beat some other people down in the ring, they come back for her, and then they throw her in the ring, so no longer am I thinking that. I'm like, damn, bro, ruin that, but you know what? Still okay, everything's alright. Natalya double crosses Lana, acts like her best friend, eliminates her. So we're down to our final four. Natalya, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, and Charlotte. Bianca eliminates Natalia. Belair and Rhea team together to eliminate Charlotte. So we're down to our final two. I didn't care at this point who the hell won the matchup. I had my destined pick and then one of my other favorite women's wrestlers. So I really didn't care who won man. Bianca and Rhea going back and forth. Some great back and forth. Great sequences. All match long. These women have been killing it. Eliminating after eliminating. Just tons of eliminations from both of these. And at the end of the day guys Bianca Belair gets rid of Rhea Ripley. And the last one standing is Bianca Belair. What a fantastic effort she enters at number three, goes the whole distance, and wins the Royal Rumble. So my pick for the Women's Rumble was correct in Bianca Belair, and uh, I was very excited for this. She totally deserves it. She was dominant the whole thing. I thought she should have won last year when she eliminated eight people. This was the right move. This was definitely the right move. I really enjoyed this Rumble. Overall, you know, I had some spots here and there where I was like, eh, but I think this was a lot better than years previous. I think that the younger talent led this thing. They did a really good job, and this is no doubt the right winner for this. I agree with this 100% can't wait to see what she does. I'm pretty sure we're going to get Sasha. She did eliminate Bailey, so maybe Bailey will get back involved and we'll have a triple threat or something, but congrats to Bianca Belair. I totally agree with it, and that was fantastic stuff. However, her post-match promo was not a fan of that. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was very good, but Bianca nonetheless won the Rumble, and there it is. Congrats. I enjoyed it. Right winner. Couldn't say much more else. Brad, what did you guys think of the Women's Rumble? Next up, guys, was the Universal Championship. My boy KO chasing after the Blue Universal title from the big dog Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, riding high on a bunch of momentum. Coming in, I didn't know they changed it to a last man standing match. I thought it was just a regular singles match, but by God, am I glad they did, man. This match slapped titties. This match was a bona fide titty slapper. You guys know slobber knocker? No longer the term. It's a titty slapper. Holy shit, Brad. This match had it all. The storytelling, the chemistry, the intensity, the passion. You felt it every step of the way. These two guys beat the hell out of each other. You gotta go back and watch it. You gotta go back and watch it. This matchup was super fire. It's a match of the year contender by far. Both men absolutely killed it. They fought all over the place. We had Roman Reigns chunk Kevin Owens off of a platform through table. They fought to the backstage area. Kevin Owens got ran over by a damn golf cart by Roman Reigns. It was a brutal looking spot that was beautifully filmed and directed, by the way. Kevin Owens did a swanton bomb off of a forklift through a couple tables to Reigns. Handcuffs were involved. I mean, this match had it all, bro. This, this was excellent. Great, like, I was on the edge of my seat many times. Great, just greatness. This is greatness. We had shenanigans. It was just epic, man. This is a match that you gotta go back and check out. If you're not even a fan 
of either of these guys. This is, if you're a wrestling fan, you will enjoy this match. Match of the night for me thus far, by far. I mean, this, this match was just excellent, bro. End of the matchup, Kevin Owens handcuffs Roman Reigns to this pole on the ground, so he can't stand up right, so they have to count, and the ref's counting, and then he gets to nine. Roman Reigns drags the referee's face into the pole, so it knocks him unconscious. Well, he's stuck there still. Paul Heyman comes out with a key trying to unlock it. Another ref comes out. He counts to four, and then when he realizes that Paul Heyman can't count anymore, he stops counting. I call bullshit, Brad. KO would have won the damn match, but they stopped counting because they knew that Roman was legit stuck, and outside of that ending, it was still a bona fide banger. It got a little sloppy right there at the end, you know, trying to get him unhooked and stuff, because I think he actually did get stuck. He couldn't figure out the key and whatnot, but that's Heyman's fault, man. KO should have been champ. After that, Roman Reigns gets out. He, uh, he, he locks in the chokehold on Kevin Owens, the guillotine or whatever, and chokes him out for the 10 count, and it, it knocks KO unconscious, but holy shit, what a match, man. I cannot say it enough. This match was amazing. Definitely go back and watch it, man. I expected Roman to win. I'm glad Roman won because of what we're going to get sooner, but I would have shit myself if KO won. I was definitely cheering KO on, but damn, man, that was great. If you could have looked great in defeat, that was it, and they have made KO look fantastic this entire feud, and hopefully he has mid-card gold or something around his waist very soon, maybe at Mania, Intercontinental, something, man. This man is just one of the best in the company. He continues to show it, but Roman Reigns does retain. It's all right. It's all good, Brad, but damn, what a damn match, man. I can't get that out of my skull. What a match. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the men's 30-man Royal Rumble matchup for our main event. Starting it out, you guys know that WWE announced it on their social media. I wasn't a fan of this. They announced that Edge and Randy Orton would be numbers one and two. Now, officially, I read it online that Orton was number one and Edge was number two. I think it got mixed up somewhere. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure this matchup started off with Edge number one and Orton came out as number two and then Edge attacked him on the way to the ring. Nonetheless, Edge had on this sick camo gear. He looked great. He looked fantastic. Just as good as he did when he left, when he got injured by Randy Orton. Now, this would be a theme throughout the matchup. Edge and Orton battling on the outside, beating the shit out of each other, injuring each other. Injuring so much that Edge actually, like, as these first five entrants went on, Randy Orton hurt his knee and he had to be escorted to the back during the matchup. Now, what's kind of creepy is I did, like, a, before the match even started, I did a Royal Rumble entrant prediction list, like, in the order, and I actually got one and two correct, obviously, because Edge and Randy Orton were announced prehand, but number three was Sami Zayn, and I actually predicted that, which I thought was pretty cool, but it actually made it a little scary, because number four, I predicted Mustafa Ali, and number four was Mustafa Ali. After that, we had entrant number five, Jeff Hardy. I was kind of sad to see Jeff Hardy that early. I wanted him to be later on in the match, but he gets RKO'd by Orton. Coming out at number six was my boy Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler comes out at number six. He had the ponytail. He had some pink wrist tape, some silver gloves on there. Edge and Orton just going crazy on each other to the outside, and Ziggler eliminates Jeff Hardy. Like, what the hell? Jeff Hardy must be hurt or something, man. He comes out and gets eliminated, like, immediately. That kind of sickened me a little bit, but, you know, I understand it. Number seven would be Shinsuke Nakamura. So he comes out. He's got his red and black striped pants on, as always. Number eight is Carlito, and I popped hard for this. I was like, oh, shit, and Carlito, bro? He looked like a million bucks. I don't have a Carlito with me right here. I got rid of my Jacks when I used to have the basic. I got rid of that one as well, but Carlito comes out, bro. He looked fantastic. He had some abs showing. He had some good muscle definition. He could be on the main roster right now, bro. He could be He could be a mid-carder going into Mania. You could book him in a match at Mania. No doubt about it in my mind. He looked great. Had this nice blue gear on. Definitely looked that moment up, but he, he looked fantastic. Number nine was Xavier Woods, so one piece of New Day coming out at number nine, and another piece of New Day at number ten. We had Big E come out. Big E gets out there and eliminates Samuel Zayn. So Sami Zayn is no longer in the Royal Rumble. At number 11, we had Johnny Mundo. John Morrison coming out there. Had the nice black and white pants on. Ali eliminates Xavier Woods. So Xavier Woods is no longer here. And right after that, Big E eliminates Mustafa Ali. I guess I can move Orton out of the way, right? Because he got escorted to the back. He wasn't there anymore. Number 12 would be Ricochet. He comes out in this sick-ass blue Ranger gear, man. He was looking good. He had his biker trunks on. Him and Edge getting into it. Who would have ever thought you'd see Ricochet and Edge tearing it up in the same football ring. Number 13 was Elias. Didn't really expect him to be in this thing, I don't think. I, I don't think I accounted for him. But he comes out and eliminates Carlito. I think their backstage segments would be hilarious. Number 14 is Damian Priest. He takes out Elias and Ricochet. He doesn't eliminate him. He just takes him out. And then eliminates Elias. Number 15 
is The Miz. On the stage, he destroys the DJ booth. Bad Bunny, he he and him, you know, they had a little, they had a little skiffy backstage or something like that. So Bad Bunny comes out. Priest eliminates Miz and Morrison. And then Bad Bunny comes off the top rope and takes out Miz and Morrison to the outside. So I'm sure we'll have some dumb WrestleMania segment with them. At number 16, we had Matthew Riddle. At number 17, we had Daniel Bryan, my pick to win the Royal Rumble this year. Daniel Bryan comes out on fire. And speaking of fire, the next entrant was Kane. Did not expect Kane, man. Didn't want to see Kane. We got Kane. And Kane comes out and he eliminates not only Dolph Ziggler, my boy, but he takes out Ricochet. Can you imagine being Ricochet? Coming to the back and they're like, yeah, Kane's going to come out and you're going to get eliminated by Kane. Kane in 2021 eliminating the up-and-coming younger talent, the superstar Ricochet. Jesus Christ. But after that, Brad Damian Priest eliminates Kane. So Kane literally gets rid of Ricochet and then just, just gets eliminated just like that. Number 19 was Trash Football Corbin and he eliminates Shinsuke Nakamura. Number 20 was Big Otis. He comes out looking great, man. He came out, he was on fire for a second, and then he gets eliminated by Corbin, like, immediately. Number 21 is Dominic Mysterio, and he takes out the trash. Number 22 is Bobby Lashley. He kills Dominic, kills Damian Priest, and then had great back-to-back -back with Big E. I think he actually uh, eliminated Priest and Dominic. Number 23, now this one, again, I did not expect whatsoever, and that was The Hurricane. The Hurricane Shane Helms comes out at 23. Funny sequence with Big E and Lashley, but then eventually just gets eliminated by both men. Number 24, I actually put it in my rumored surprise entrance, Brad. Christian is the number 24 entrance, shocked by Edge, eliminates Bobby Lashley along with the other baby faces in the match. They all team up and get rid of Lashley. Number 25 is AJ Styles. Number 26 is Rey Mysterio. Almost eliminates Big E, so uh, AJ Styles' body bodyguard getting the job done, eliminating Big E. Number 27 is Sheamus. Almost eliminates Rey Mysterio like he did Big E on the apron. Kind of threw him into the barricade. Thought that was pretty good. Number 28 was Cesaro. Number 29 was Seth freaking Rollins. I popped hard for this, man. I was popping hard. I did not expect the Monday Night Messiah theme music. I did not expect that, man. You guys know that at Survivor Series, the Messiah sacrificed himself. So you would think that he would go away and then come back to the burn it down. Did you guys hear when his music dropped and it went black for a second and then the pyro went off? I thought for sure we were going to hear burn it down. It did not happen. Then Seth Rollins comes out. He's got the black and red gear on. Beard looks good. Hair looks good. He had a fantastic red leather jacket on. I wasn't a big fan of the gear. I really don't want it. It's got like three messiahs down the side. It's got a silhouette on the other side. I don't know. It was just kind of eh gear to me. I didn't really care for it that much, to be honest with you. Nonetheless, that takes us into our number 30 entrant, which is going to be Big Bad Braun Football Strowman. So that's it. That is all of our entrants. I was sickened that number 30 was Braun, but I already knew it was going to happen because as we were approaching number 30, you know, at a certain point, you run out of spots, right? Like, you know who's left. You know Cesaro and so-and-so and so-and-so's -and -so left. So you're like, well, damn. Now that 29's Rollins, 30 has to be Braun because he's not out yet and we know he's in the match. But out comes Braun. He eliminates Cesaro. He eliminates Sheamus. He eliminates Styles. And this is where the shit hits the fan, Brad. Didn't see this coming one bit. Daniel Bryan is in the middle of the ring. Seth Rollins on the outside. He comes in, attacks Bryan, curb stomp, and eliminates Daniel Bryan. I thought for sure Daniel Bryan was going to win, man. And I have a good track record of predicting rumbles correctly. Not this year, man. Not to be so. Seth Rollins eliminates Daniel Bryan, and we are down to our final five in the middle of the ring. Seth eliminates Riddle. We're down to our final four. Rollins, Edge, Christian, and Braun. Braun Strowman are trying to eliminate Edge, but Christian comes over and helps him eliminate Braun, but right at the same time, Rollins is eliminating Christian, so we're down to the final two, Edge and Seth Rollins. Dream matchup right here. Edge and Seth going back and forth. Edge eliminates Seth Rollins, and he wins the run. No, Brad, remember. Remember RKO. Randy Orton from behind. RKO to Edge. Going for the elimination. Edge reverses it, throws Randy Orton over the top, and Edge is the winner of the 2021 Royal Rumble after returning in the 2020 Royal Rumble. What a matchup, man. 
that was intense at the end. I feel like it happened so damn quick, so fast. Like, it just happened so damn fast. I didn't even get to blink, and it, it, there it is. We're already done. The match is over. Edge eliminates Randy Orton, Brad, and that is it. He is your 2021 Rumble winner. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought Daniel Bryan was going to win. I for sure thought Daniel Bryan was going to win. Edge winning, I liked more. Like, I liked it more. I liked the moment more. It was shocking. I didn't expect it. I'm very happy for it because I really didn't want Brian to win, but I thought he would win. And damn, I just don't know. Are we going to get Edge versus Drew? Edge versus Roman? Is somebody going to win the chamber? Like, how is it going to work? We're going to have to find the hell out, but I love this moment. Um, The only reason I didn't expect Edge to win is because of the Randy Orton dynamic and stuff, but we didn't have a Fiend elimination or nothing like that. So, lots of questions, bro, but I enjoyed this Royal Rumble matchup. Not as exciting as far as, like, entrance. Like, yeah, we got Carlito. We got the Hurricane. We got Christian. We had some cool moments. Seth Rollins returned. But at the end of the day, it was still an enjoyable Rumble. I like the moments we got. Could it have been better? Probably. But this winner was outstanding. I really enjoyed the, the celebration and the, and the actual moment of Edge winning. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. So, overall, I enjoyed the Royal Rumble. I thought Roman and KO put on a great show. Every match outside of maybe the Men's Rumble and the Universal title match was kind of bleh. I mean, it was eh for me or middle of the road. I love that Bianca Belair won. I love both winners, actually. But both winners, I'm very happy and satisfied with, so I have no complaints there. But damn, Brad, what an epic show. Let me know what you guys thought of it down in the comments section below. I thought it was pretty epic. But I feel like I've been here for a freaking minute, man. I'm gonna go get some damn water. I felt like my mouse dry in the Sahara Desert out here. Let me know what you guys think down tomorrow, man. Just watching Royal Rumbles makes me want to film Royal Rumbles. I know how long and, like, just it, it's such a grind to film a Royal Rumble match, like a pick-fed match like that. Like, you know, with the, the the MDT Royal Rumble that we did, I would love to do that again, like, tomorrow, but it's just it's the, there's so much that goes into it, it would be like, impossible. But Jesus Christ, bro. I'm so happy for Edge. He's one of my favorites of all time, so seeing that moment like that was excellent. Did not see him winning at all. He went the distance. I don't know if he was officially number one or two, but nonetheless, man, hats off to him, and I guess, I think I got four or five entrants correctly on my prediction list. I'll have to go back and check it out, but looks like I'm ordering some figures from Ringside Collectibles, and I'm definitely going to be using promo code MDTOYS, and I'm definitely going to get that Chase variant Edge, and I got to include the Royal Rumble winner. I think it's only necessary that be one of the rules of the prediction list, but thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the Rumble review. Let me know what you think of the in the comments section down below. Overall, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was real, but it wasn't real fun. I'm just kidding. Seriously, though. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, don't cross the line, Brad. You cross the line. I've been beaten